The PCB motor is one of the most efficient smaller scale designs. It has a wide diversity of applications including smartwatches, gaming controllers, and even laboratory equipment. The motor variant is very quiet, smooth, and responsive. But on top of that, they are also lighter and slimmer when compared to a traditional radial motor. This is because it utilizes an actual flux design, and it allows the magnetic flux to travel parallel to the axis of rotation. We have already seen a couple of infamous actual flux motors that have very high power density. Yet the PCB motor takes it one step further because it eliminates the electromagnetic coils. Instead, it's replaced with a flat circuit board where the copper is only etched where it is needed. The PCB is typically the stator or the stationary part of the motor. They can come in many different forms and now companies like ECM are providing fully custom profiles. There's a high degree of control in a PCB. When the current is switched on to these etchings, it turns them into electromagnets. The rotating part, the rotor, contains permanent magnets and interacts with the magnetic field. The current in these PCB etchings is turned rapidly on and off, so it's synced just right to keep the rotor's magnetic field misaligned with the stator's field, and this maintains the torque and allows the rotor to spin continuously. So it's very similar to an actual flux motor with copper windings. The only difference is, is that these etchings on the printed circuit board can be highly controlled. In other words, you can rapidly switch the voltage and current and maintain very high speed under load, with notable variants reaching over 30,000 RPM. Another way to look at this is just to look at an actual flux machine, and as you can see with this, the actual copper windings are kind of thick. They're about a half inch thick on this particular demo unit. And what the PCB motor is doing is shrinking those coils down into the plate. So it's pretty much a two-dimensional design. Now they're great for small to medium applications, but the problem is, is when you're getting larger, you cannot supply as many amps as compared to a larger actual flux machine. And this is the design challenge is that a PCB motor is not totally scalable from something really miniature to something very large into a couple hundred horsepower, a couple hundred kilowatts. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that a PCB will require high temperature laminates and there could be multiple laminations or multiple layers stacked together to handle these higher currents. So even though it is true that standard PCBs can be mass produced for smaller things like electronics, there is definitely a limitation on the power density and the scale of a PCB stator. So manufacturers are trying to get around this problem by looking at multiple PCB stacking. And in theory, this would give you higher power density. The thing that's definitively known is that actual flux machines typically carry higher power densities when compared to radial flux machines, just because of their topology. But it also depends on how much money do you want to spend to, to get that extra performance. Because as of right now, an actual flux coppered motor usually depends on an extremely small air gap between the stator and rotor. And this usually means that there can be bowing or deformation that can completely obliterate the design. Not to mention that the stator windings are very complex to make as of right now. And that's the question of the future. Can the PCB stator displace some of the actual flux machines out there because maybe it can be produced at a cheaper cost? And that's what is so interesting about the Infinium Aircore motor that is in development. It can be incorporated into larger horsepower applications like HVACs, pumps, possibly even electric vehicles. They are working on a motor that can possibly output at a continuous 150 kilowatts at 20 kilograms. That roughly equates to 200 horsepower at 44 pounds. And they're also stating that this motor is modular so you can stack motors together to scale the torque or power if needed. They incorporate a variable frequency drive that converts the DC into three phase AC waveform for speed, torque and directional control. And this is matched to the PCB stator. So just like the smaller PCB motors, it's very quiet, efficient and responsive. And it might be really good for an area where you want to have that really high rated efficiency synchronous motor design, but you have limited space to work with. So what is the future for PCB motors? Well, there could potentially be a variant that is made out of carbon nanotubes. 
which are cylinder structures made of rolled up sheets of single layer carbon atoms called graphene. And this is a very interesting material because these CNT fibers can handle over 120% of copper's conductivity and handle heat very well. They do not fatigue and they don't crack or flex with vibration. The problem with CNT fibers is that they require very expensive manufacturing techniques that are not really meant for mass producing. So it might take a few decades until we have a perfected PCB motor. Ultimately, this motor is already proved to be effective in instrumentation and consumer electronics. And it looks probable that it will get into larger applications. More importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.